Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Down and Dirty. Today we're gonna talk about how much can you expect to make in the construction industry? Not only when you first hire in, but even down the road once you get some experience. So the first thing I wanna talk about is you can kind of break the US into two halves. Traditionally, it's been north and south. What it's morphed into is really non-union versus union states. Wages tend to be a little higher in union states. So therefore, if you are in a southern state, you're gonna make a little bit less in the industry just because of the dynamics at play there. So if you were starting with a small company in the south, you generally start in one of two places. You'd be on the end of a shovel, which is most likely, or you're gonna start off on one of the easier pieces of equipment, such as a roller or an off-road dump truck. You're probably gonna make about $12 to $14 an hour is what I would be shooting for, any less than that, and I think someone might be kinda of taking advantage of you a little bit, but 12 to 14 is probably a pretty good wage to shoot for. Wages are gonna rise over time with experience. It's not like a union state. You have to put in time in order to get those raises, so it's not gonna happen overnight. It's probably not gonna happen for your first year. So just just go into it knowing that you are going to be stuck at that small wage for the majority of your first year. So my experience is in the south, in Texas, wages tend to top out around $26 to $28 an hour. Generally that's going to be a highly skilled position like a grader hand or possibly a long-term hoe hand who's laying pipe and, and doing some pretty complicated digging. It's generally not gonna be some guy that's been with the company for 30 years running an off-road dump truck. So know that you do have to progress in this business in order to get those raises. They don't just come as handouts. Larger companies may offer benefits. Smaller companies most likely will not offer benefits, although this is one of the areas in construction that is rapidly changing due to the fact that there aren't many skilled workers out there. Businesses are having to get more aggressive with what they offer in order to attract more people. So in a union state, there's two possible progressions that you can go down. We're gonna get into the actual process in another video where I talk about how to get into the construction industry, but today I just wanna stick with talking about pay and wages. So the first route is you can go with a non-union company like a small residential company. You can start out kind of similar to what we just talked about in the south where you start on the end of a shovel or you might be running a skid steer or something small. The wages you're gonna look for is probably about the 10 to $12 an hour mark, and it is just because these are non-union companies, they are smaller companies, so pay isn't gonna be as good as a larger company, but this is a great way to get your foot in the door and get some experience and learn with zero experience in the industry. These guys are always looking for good laborers that have good work ethic, and so that might actually help you negotiate your wages up a little bit relatively early on, as opposed to having to wait a year or two down the road to get a raise. Most likely you're not gonna have any benefits at a small company, it's gonna be a strict cash deal. I say cash, you'll get a regular paycheck, but you're not gonna get any fringe benefits associated with it. Wages will rise over time, but again, that comes with experience, it comes with you proving yourself to the employer. The one advantage there with going non-union is you will have the ability to get raises earlier than you would in a union, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. At these small companies, you can probably generally, and with everything I say, I want you to take it with a grain of salt, there's always exceptions to the rule, but just kind of a general rule of thumb, these companies are gonna probably top you out around 20 to $22 an hour. Getting much beyond that, you're probably not gonna be very successful at a small company. The second way you can go about getting a job in the North in a unionized state is by actually going through the union. So I'm gonna come at this in a back ass words way and I'll explain why. We're gonna talk about what a journeyman makes. So a journeyman in the construction industry and specifically the earth moving industry is gonna make about 29 to $31 an hour. You're also gonna have fringe benefits with that. So so the total package is probably around the $35 an hour mark once you you know add in your benefits, vision, dental, all the other stuff associated with it. The reason I wanted to start with that is because if you start in the industry on the union side, you will go in as what's called an apprentice. That means you don't have the skills. You're going to spend five years, it's a five year apprenticeship program. You're gonna spend five years learning those skills, going through both classes through the union and doing on the job training. When you get hired in as an apprentice, you start at 70% of what journeyman make. The math there is about $20 an hour. So you'll start making $20 an hour and you get all of the benefits that a journeyman does. Every six months for the next five years, you will go up 5%. So after six months in your apprenticeship, you'll be making 75% of what a journeyman does. After a year, you'll be making 80% of what a journeyman does. So that's why I wanted to talk about journeyman pay first. Now, one huge advantage of going the union route, if it's available to you is, 
you have access to training facilities, you have access to classes. Uh, part of what your wages go to pay into is your use of those facilities. So I was able to go in and take crane operating classes, so hoisting classes. I was able to take rigging classes. I could have taken GPS grade courses. Uh, I was able to go in and take OSHA 30 hour courses, all free of charge. All I had to do was go in and sign up. It's free of charge because my wages paid for me to go use that training facility. If I ever wanted to go out to the training facility and just dink around in a grader one day or dink around in a dozer, all I had to do was call up there and make sure the equipment was free and free of charge I could go out there and use that facility. So that is one great advantage of going the route of the union if you decide to get into this business. Wages through the union are obviously better, but there is one drawback, and it's what I mentioned earlier about getting a raise on time. The way raises work in the union is you don't get a raise. You get a contract renegotiation, not you personally. The union, every five years, goes and renegotiates their contract. In that contract negotiation, that's part of it, is they negotiate where wages will be set. And when they're set, it's for the next five years. There's no guarantee that wages are gonna go up. So that is something to be aware of on the union side. Now you do get a pension, you do get all of the other goodies that go along with it. So again, in the grand scheme of things, I think that's the better route to go. But it is something you need to be aware of that you don't get access to just a raise here and there like you would in a smaller company. Your employer does, they have the option available to them to give you a raise if you're just an exceptional employee. You aren't restricted to what the union contract says you'll make. They can't take you below that but they can certainly pay you above that. So that's just something to be aware of. Well, let's talk about my personal experience when I was an operator, how much did I actually make? So when I started in Texas, I was running an off-road haul truck for one of the larger companies, and I was working, I believe, six days a week, and we were pulling about 10 to 12 hour days, and my first year I made about $43,000 with those guys. Uh, mind you, I didn't hire in at the very beginning of the season, I was a hair late, but, you know, like I said, I was making, I think, 12 or $14 an hour running the off-road haul truck, so you are gonna start in a non-union state, new to a company, you are gonna start kind of at the bottom rung, which you should expect to do in this industry anyway. After I got done working with that company in Texas, my wife and I decided to move to Michigan, and I actually went the route of going through a small company. I got a job with a small residential company doing basement work, that's actually where many of my original videos came from. I was working about five to six days a week in the summers, and we would work light hours in the winter, but we were still working in the winter, and I made about 50 to 55,000 with that company. So you do see a step up in wages just because of where you're at. Part of it was because I had a skill set now that I was able to bring to the job and over the next year or two I was able to negotiate my pay up with those guys. But I was making a comfortable $50,000 a year working for a small residential company. Now, no, no benefits whatsoever, but it was decent paycheck. After I got my skills to where I really had my craft down, that's when I went to one of the large companies that was a union company. The union up here in Michigan I know is in kind of a unique spot because they're hurting for operators. So if you you can go in and show your skills, they will give you a journeyman's card. They will let you skip the apprenticeship program and that is exactly what I did. I was able to go out on the job, show that I knew the equipment, I knew how to run it on the job and I was able to get my journeyman card. Now you're into a whole other ball game. My first year with Dan's, mind you, I was working seven days a week. This is what I talked about on my first video uh, on getting started in the industry or can you hack it. Uh, I was working crazy hours. It was you know, 16 hour days on that for seven days a week for the vast majority of the summer. That being said, my first year with Dan's, I made 85 grand in six months. Think about that for a minute. In, in half a year, I made $85,000 at that job. So you can make very good money in this industry. You're just gonna work your butt off for it and it's gonna be a crap load of hours. So that is something I want you guys to be aware of. You know, like I mentioned in that Can You Hack It video, it's gonna be a lot of hours, but the money's there. It's absolutely a lucrative business to go into and you're talking, even if you go the apprenticeship program, you're making that money within five years of, you know, say you make the decision to go today. Within five years, you're making that kind of money. I did have operators that worked with me at that union company that in the summertime they would work for this company and in the wintertime they would actually go plow snow or some of them got into the hoisting side and they would do some plant work with GM and stuff like that. Those guys would commonly make 100 to 110 a year. They were doing year round work so you don't get that six months off in the wintertime like I like taking advantage of. But that being said, you can easily make over $100,000 in a union state working year round. It is a very, very attainable number to make six figures. 
So I hope this kind of dispels some of the mystery around how much money you get and kind of how pay works and difference between union, non-union. As always, if I left anything out, feel free to comment down below, ask questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And if I need to make a follow-up video to this, I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching and you guys have a good day.